Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released QPR1, the final version, along with Pixel Drop for December 2024. This video will be classified into two sections. I will first show you the Pixel Drop features and then we're going to talk about QPR1. So without further ado, let's jump in. Before starting, let me remind you that all the wallpapers you see in this video or any of my previous videos are now part of the Wallpapers by In-Depth Tech Reviews app that you will find its Google Play Store download link in the description. And now let's talk about the new features. The good news is this pixel drop has a lot of new exciting features, but the bad news, I didn't get any of them except one feature in Instagram, which is the ability to take ultra HDR photos using the camera. So I will point it towards the lights to show you how it looks. As you see here, the lights are much brighter than the rest of the photo, which is the same Ultra HDR effect we have in Google Photos. So I will wait until I get the rest of the features and create a follow-up video to show you how they work in real life. And now let's talk about the features in QPR1. The first change is the new wallpaper blur animation when you move back to your home screen. So for example, when I open an app and go back, you will notice that the wallpaper blurs for a couple of seconds and then goes back to normal which looks really nice. Also, when you tap and hold, the overlay menu takes slightly longer to appear when compared to the previous version of Android 15. And when you open apps from your widget, you will see this new bouncy animation like in this YouTube music widget, but it only applies to the first row of widgets on your home screen because as you see, my Google Home and battery widgets are not doing the same thing. You will also notice that the themed app icons are now brighter when compared to November update and this is how they look in light theme. Let me also show you the dark theme difference when I have the same wallpaper and the color palette on both. The split screen swap animation is also different along with the bar that separates between them. In the newer version it's shorter and when I double tap to swap you will see this brand new animation instead of the flat one in the previous versions of Android 15. When you archive an app you will see a tiny archive icon next to the app name and instead of having a big one on top of the app icon like before. Moving to the system wide search, when you go to your home settings and then search settings, you will see a new menu item called control search results, which will allow you to choose what apps to include in your search results, plus a toggle called before searching, which will show your history and activity based on the device suggestions, even before typing anything like this. Now let's talk about the quick settings. The first change is the new haptic feedback and the animation when you tap and hold on any of the tiles. It's much longer than the previous one and as you see the tile expands before moving to the uh, relevant page which feels really nice in hand. Moving to the screen recorder you will see some new changes. The first one when you select record one app the start recording button is now called next. Tapping on it will take you to the page where you can pick the app you want. So let's say Google Play Store. You will also notice this new pill at the top left corner that will, will that will show you the duration. And when you tap on it, you have the ability to stop the recording from here using this overlay card. The screen casting also got the same exact changes as the screen recorder. So when I choose my Chromecast with Google TV and select whatever app I want, you will notice the same pill at the top left corner showing the time. And when you tap on it, it will allow you to stop the casting as well. The status bar on the Pixel 9 models is now shifted slightly towards the bottom to be perfectly centered with the bigger front camera of the newer models, which wasn't the case before. Moving to the notifications, if you are watching content or playing games in full screen view like this, you will see a compact banner at the top to be less distracting in a situation like this. And the last change in this area, when you drag your finger over the brightness slider, you will see a very shaded dot exactly in the center to give you a sense of where the 50% is located. Now let me show you some random tweaks here and there before talking about the changes under settings. And the first one is the new back gesture animation for the keyboard. Another change related to the keyboard is the different icon at the bottom right corner. Now it looks like a globe instead of a tiny keyboard like before. You can use it to do the same thing to change the language, but it will also switch between the keyboards you have set up on your phone with the ability to tap and hold on it and get a list of all the available options 
in an overlay card. And when it comes to the volume controls, when I connect my Pixel Buds Pro, I see two new toggles, one for the noise cancellation, where I can activate the transparency, noise cancellation, or turn the feature off, and another one for the spatial audio to choose between fixed and head tracking. Now let's talk about the new changes under settings. The first thing you will notice is the new banner at the top that says your device was updated with the ability to remove the banner if you want by tapping on the X. But when you tap on the banner itself, it will take you to the Pixel Tips app where you can see the new changes in this software update. Beside this, the whole settings page got a complete revamp and you will see things are now categorized based on relevance. And instead of having everything stacked on top of each other like before, you will also notice that the Google option is now the first one in the list instead of being near the end like before. Plus, the animations are now more refined when compared to the previous version. Under accessibility and then color and motion and then color correction, when you turn the feature on, now you have the ability to adjust the intensity. Under battery, you will see a new menu item called charging optimization. And here you will see the same adaptive charging feature as before on top of a new feature called limit to 80% which will only charge your phone to 80% when you plug it to the charger overnight. And if your phone is already above 80% and you activated the feature, when you plug the charger, you will see a shield icon next to the battery and the phone will not charge until it becomes below 80%. And if your Pixel phone supports wired external displays like the Pixel 9 Pro XL, for example, when you connect it and then go to mirror display and then jump to settings, connected devices, you will see a new main menu item called external display. Tapping on it will allow you to adjust the resolution, which is currently grayed out for some reason. And you can also change the rotation and you have 90, 180 and 270 degrees. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to show you. And I will definitely create a follow up video to include the missing features that I didn't get at the time of filming this video. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.